Welcome back everybody. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the concept of methods inside of C Sharp. So to begin, we're gonna start with a basic class and you'll probably wanna prefix this with public, which I forgot to do in the previous video. All right, so let's jump into it. Monday.com is your visual project management solution. This is the tool that allows you to see where every task or project stands with a single glance. With a fully customizable interface, you can create the exact workflow that you need for you and your team to get stuff done. Monday.com is available on mobile and integrates well with some of the most popular tools out there. So get your life in order by giving it a try for free. Link in the description. So a method is just another name for a function. It does something, it can take input and give out output. So a simple example for a person might be a method called talk. We put the parentheses, if we want to have any arguments passed in, we would create parameters here and we'll get into practicing this later on. And then we open it with curly braces and then we can put our code, our logic for the method here. So let's just say we built some awesome method code here. We put that there. How would we actually use this? Well, first we need to create a new person. So somewhere else in our code, we would say person, give it a name, new person, something like this. Then the identifier is me. So we would say me dot whatever the method is in this case, talk. And we can do that because it's public. That means we can access it from our object using the dot operator. So what does this method actually do? Right now it does nothing. But what we could do is we could console right line the person's name, or what we could do is we could actually return a string and then console log it down here, which is more of a uh, best practices way of doing things. So we would probably say return. What are we gonna return? We can just return a string and say, hi, I'm, put a space and the string, put a plus sign, and then we could use a field name and then a semicolon. So that's going to return the string, hi, I'm Caleb. But the problem is name currently doesn't have a value. Nowhere in this situation do we even have the name field and we're not assigning it a value. So what we might do is we might say string name, semicolon, and now we can print that name. But where does it get the value from? Well, this is an interesting thing. We have a couple of different options. One, we can make it public. In that situation, we might use a property. So it might look like this. Give it a capital name there. Say get and set and make it public. That's probably the best way to do it. And then down here, we could say me.name and give it a value. Alternatively, you could just get rid of this set here and only make it settable through a constructor call, such as this right here. We can pass in a value to that, assign the value to name, and we're getting a little bit off topic. We're getting into constructors, which we'll get into later on. So stay focused and we'll get to that soon. But the best thing to probably do here is just to make this a property like so. Beautiful. All right, so to conclude, let me just clear off the board just to clear our minds a little bit. Methods allow us to do things with our objects. They define behaviors or actions that an object would do, such as announce their name. Methods, because they're defined within the curly braces of a class, they can access private fields and any other private members that we have in our class. To invoke a method, all you have to do is instantiate the class by saying new person or whatever it is and assigning it to a variable of that type. And then we use that identifier dot method, such as me dot talk. Then we invoke it with the parentheses and we're good to go. So in the one we just created, we were returning the string. Once we got that string, we can use it however we want. So if we say me.talk and this returns a string, we can throw that in a console.write line by writing it out, but I don't want to. <laughs> or you could take this and pass it as an argument to another method or anywhere that's expecting a string, you could use me.talk. Because that's going to invoke that method. It's gonna return, hi, I'm Caleb. So you can kind of visualize, hi, I'm Caleb being replaced right here. And then that being passed to whatever else. <laughs> so hopefully that was a good introduction to methods. There's a lot of information here. And the main thing I want you to get from it is just that methods are used to define behaviors for objects. And now we're gonna get into defining our own classes, our own objects, and eventually our own properties and methods and constructors and all of that stuff. So stay tuned, I'm super excited. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.